Right, on to adrenergic function, the last component of the autonomic reflex screen. And again, there's many tests you can utilize to assess adrenergic function. Uh, this is not a comprehensive list, but a, a list of, of the more commonly used methods. Uh, we use routinely those two, sometimes the third one here listed. Um, and again, why do we use those? Because again, the same reason, sensitivity, specificity, reproducibility, et cetera, that I mentioned before. So in order to understand and be able to interpret um, adrenergic function and dysfunction using the Valsawa maneuver, you have to understand a little bit about the physiology that's underlying the blood pressure responses to the Valsawa maneuver. Uh, it's actually fairly simple if you split it up into the different phases of the maneuver. So there's phase one, which is purely a mechanical phase. You uh, blow into that bugle, you increase interthoracic pressure, and there's a fluid shift from central to, to peripheral compartments of the body, and there's a transient a brief rise in blood pressure that you detect when you read the blood pressure from the finger. Uh, purely mechanical. Early phase two is the preceding decline in blood pressure. It is the subsequent decline in blood pressure. Uh, that is caused, again, you have an increased interthoracic pressure, therefore you have decreased venous return, <coughs> decreased cardiac filling, decreased stroke volume, and your blood pressure continues to go down. And it would continue to do so unless something happened, and this is where the autonomic nervous system comes in. Now it's getting interesting, that's late phase two. Our baroreceptor sends the drop in blood pressure, and that results in vagal withdrawal and um, sympathetic stimulation. Your peripheral resistance increases, your cardiac output increases, your heart rate increases, and as a result of that, blood pressure stops falling and eventually uh, goes back to baseline while still blowing, while the, the thoracic uh, pressure is still increased. Then once the subject stops blowing, you get phase three, which is basically the mirror image of phase one, a mechanical phase, Basically, a pressure shifts back to the uh, central compartment briefly. And then a uh, increased cardiac output is being forced against a preconstricted vascular bed, and you get an overshoot. Blood pressure rises above baseline and does so for a number of seconds before going back to baseline. This is phase four. So to summarize all this, the two components of the Valsal maneuver that we're really interested in uh, late phase two and phase four. Those two reflect autonergic function. The rest is eh, sort of interesting, but uh, doesn't really give you much information about the autonomic nervous system. And that can be nicely shown in studies where we look at normal control, someone with mild, moderate, and severe autonergic impairment. And you can progressively see late phase two disappear, and you can progressively see phase four disappear and become actually sort of a negative, slow, passive return or recoil back to baseline rather than an overshoot. Um, again, there's a number of factors, just like the ones before, that can affect blood pressure responses to the Valsalvo maneuver, and those are listed here. Uh, again, I cannot emphasize medications enough um, that the patient needs to be tapered off before autonomic testing. A few more examples of a normal response here on top. This is actually the beat-to-beat -beat recording to show you the physiology. Um, someone with modest adrenergic impairment and then someone with severe adrenergic failure where it takes some 30 seconds for blood pressure to return back to baseline. Um, our focus on grading the severity of adrenergic failure has really shifted from just looking at late phase two to looking at the time it takes for blood pressure to recover following the maneuver. And uh, we actually hypothesized that we can quantify that and have a quantifiable measure of adrenergic baroreflex sensitivity by looking at the blood pressure recovery or indices re <coughs> derived from blood pressure recovery following the maneuver. And in fact, we, we looked at groups of, of patients with different severity of autonergic failure in normal controls and have a nice gradation and a nice separation of those groups by utilizing simply blood pressure recovery time. Um, we have normative values established now and published, 
and that's a very helpful tool in assessing and quantifying adrenergic failure. And it correlates with microneurography. Another uh, uh, interesting uh, association of PRT is that with the orthostatic blood pressure drop. We've shown that if your pressure recovery time is greater than seven seconds, there's a over uh, there's a 87% sensitivity and over 90% specificity that the person will have orthostatic hypotension on head up tilt. This is kind of a nice way of knowing when to expect someone to have orthostatic hypertension before you even tilt them up. Thank you.